All right, guys, thanks for coming. Um, so we've had this space uh, for the last three months. It's like our run club meetup spot. We meet here every Saturday. And I've got to meet an amazing amount of people because of our run club, because of my podcast. Uh, I kind of went into all this stuff. I, I knew a lot of people and I had this amazing network. But I think I had my network in my little bubble life that I live in West Hollywood, where I was like, I know everyone. And then I started doing all this content. I started doing Run Club and traveling the country, running with literally random people. And my network just exploded of more interesting people um, from all walks of life doing the most amazing and interesting things. And because of that, I've been fortunate enough. I feel like I'm ahead of the curve on everything. Like I'm learning things like, 10 steps before everybody else because I'm just around really interesting people. And the only way you can survive in any industry is like be it, you know, soak up information and try to apply it to whatever you, you do for a, a career. And so what I wanted to do in things like this is just like highlight interesting people that I've met along the way, kind of learn about their business and then, you know, really just open it up to all of us to just have a discussion about literally anything, kind of everyone introduce themselves, what they do, and 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 kind of go from there. But it's super casual. Uh, after we do this, like, kind of 10, 15 minute kind of Q&A, it's like open for everyone. And if you don't want the cameras on, you can just say, turn off the camera and speak freely. I obviously, if you know me, I say everything with the camera on. I don't, <laughs> at this point, I'm an open book. But um, today we have Ryan Tierney, who I got to meet through the Run Club. I think, did Taylor bring him one night after being hungover? He's still every Saturday. He's, he's every Saturday. He's religiously hungover. He shows up, though. And it's I've got to know <laughs> Ryan pretty well. And he's fascinating because he started a business. His first business was, I think, you acquired meme pages. Yeah. And so, made money doing this, mm -hmm. and then he then acquired a company that then had a account called Paradise on Instagram, and he's actually made a lot of money doing this, and that to me just sounds insane. Like, but you know, have an Instagram account that generates money. That's not like it's not like he's selling a brand or a product or anything. He's just figured out how to monetize <sighs> an Instagram account. How did you, first of all, tell me about the memes, because I'm, yeah. I'm a meme guy. So when I uh, graduated from college, I went to Boulder, Colorado. When I graduated from college. Which I, is when? In 2016. Oh, wow, you're young. So in the summer of 2016, we started working with a lot of uh, female-focused meme pages. So we would go to an advertiser like AOL or <laughs> Yahoo and say, hey, we have this you know, huge network of accounts reaching anywhere from, you know, 10 to 30 million people per week, you guys should run advertisements with us through branded content and really just realize that we needed to buy all of these meme pages. Um, so like, give me an example of an account that maybe... Uh, one account was called like Cute Saying and another account was called Girlsology. Okay, and what, what, would, what would they post on these accounts? So <laughs> these accounts were just relatable memes to young females' everyday life. So the, the, our following, uh, majority followers on all these pages were anywhere from 16 to 21. So super, super young, but you know, huge audience, obviously a lot of purchasing power in that audience. And these big advertisers like AOL, Yahoo, you know, uh, Bustle Media, they're spending you know, millions and millions of dollars on TV ads and all these other forms of advertising. And we could really just turn around massive marketing campaigns in, you know, a couple of days because we curate a, you know, a, a funny photo of a girl or a dog and put some catchy. But did know, it work? It, I mean, if you're, we're selling impressions and comparable to what these brands are going to pay on TV. I mean, they're, the bang for their buck is. So that's insane. how you were getting customers. You were mm -hmm. saying. You're reaching a million people on advertising on growing pain uh, reruns. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is a better better model. Yeah. And, and, and they felt that it was worth their time. For sure. And we even had brands that would pay us uh, 
you know, monthly retainers just to make content, uh, like wearing their clothing. So like the meme would be basically the exact same meme that we found on another page, and then we'd put someone in a Santa Cruz sweatshirt hoodie, and they're just paying for that those eyeballs and brand awareness. Same reason that you know, like back in the day, Jimmy John's uh, would pay these Vine influencers like 200k to make three vines behind the shop at Jimmy John's. Really? Yeah. And so they they felt that was a viable way to to market their brands and products. So then you do the meme page, you then exit that. Is that what happens? You sell that business or what happens? Yeah, well, before we exit the meme thing, I was in one of the memes, I was actually uh, one of the people, the memes? In, people in the meme and this meme went viral and it was me standing next to one of my friends that was a girl at the time and the next meme was her holding a dog and it said he cheated on me so I pup graded and this <laughs> this meme went viral across the internet was on all these repost accounts all over these so you were people. like the most hated guy was the most hated guy <laughs> on the internet and if you looked in the comments it said like don't worry girl he ugly anyways <laughs> And, and was that a branded content moment for a brand? Or yeah, it was. What, what was it like? It, a, was, it was actually for Santa Cruz uh, skateboards. Okay. And so many other pages and so many other websites picked it up, and it went so viral that in the report that we gave back to them, we said, "Hey, look, you know, you paid us, you know, whatever five thousand bucks." Yeah. For so a, I was going to ask you, how much did they pay you? They paid five grand for they, that. They paid us like five grand or something, and they probably got. 10, 20 million free impressions across the internet just because everybody wanted to roast me. Wow. So yeah. you're just a big cheat. Yeah. Um, and then how did you end up with Paradise? So the way I've looked at a lot of these audiences since then is a lot of them are undervalued by their owner. And you know this guy had a you know small travel business. He had worked with a couple hospitality groups that really didn't go all in on it. And Paradise, you know, at the time, is his main asset that had uh, about 2.3 million followers. And we were looking at that and thought, wow, we could really you know, take this to the next level. And that's what we did. We acquired his company and have used it since to get in the door with so many big uh, tourism boards, hospitality groups, um, and you know, leverage that audience as well to you know, shoot for big brands. Because you know, when we hit up a company and say, hey, this is our, you know, this is our flagship account, they really trust that we're gonna, you know, know what content works and. That so how do they know your followers are real? Your likes are real? They don't. So I should buy fake followers. Well, yes. the the account, all the followers are real. Yeah. We didn't go and buy like bot followers. Yeah. But I mean, but like, they would have no. But like the tourism board of Turks and Caicos or whatever mm -hmm. that does a con content deal with you has no idea mm -hmm. if you have real followers, real likes. And they don't care. They just see 2.3 million. They're like, yeah, but now we, so the Paradise audience gets us really in the door, but where we make most of our money is actually production because whether those followers are real or fake, we pitch that we're going to create the best content for them. Got so it. they're getting 60 second videos, short form videos, great photo assets, and they can use that across any of their media outlets. Got it. So we've shot something for you know, a brand like WeWork and seeing it repurposed like as another commercial or something. So like they get all this really valuable content um, and it's not just the audience they're tapping into, but it is a nice one-two punch because we come in with, you know, millions of followers, we're gonna get so many, you know, views, you know, lots of engagements across our audience and then they get a ton of content as well. So, I mean, I know that you go on these like pretty uh, lavish like hotel trips at like beach locations because that's what your account's. And is the hotel thinking like, okay, we're gonna bring this account here. We're gonna give all him and his idiot friends, AKA Taylor, free rooms, alcohol, whatever. Mm -hmm. And their view is that is going to drive uh, business. Yeah, I mean, even if, let's just say it's a hotel okay. and there's 10 open rooms mm -hmm. and they're not gonna sell those rooms anyways, for us to stay there, for say if, if it's like a trade or something, we just want to cruise by for the night. That's such an easy trade for them. We post on the page, and the fact that they they might book you know ten rooms from that one post that reached millions of people seems like a pretty good deal. And then obviously, when we're working with bigger tourism teams or like the corporate level of these hospitality groups, that is a yeah pretty big budget campaign. 
that they're going to get the content and then you know posts across our network and sometimes you know the content creators that we bring also have pretty big followings themselves and so do you think what's the expectation of the people buying spending money with 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 you guys um yeah our pitch is that we're going to give them the best content that they've created especially and we come up with a you know a whole game plan where we write the creative come up with this you know group travel idea and they're going to get so much content for you know their instagram their website maybe they'll use it um repurpose it for a commercial down the line and that that's really the value add that and how much would you charge for something like that it definitely depends on their brand um i know the price the place that you guys went to in tulum uh, we would charge like something around 20, 30 grand for that. Got it. And then they would still take care of your travel and... Yeah. But it. sometimes it is a baked in cost. Like we'll have a, you know, a tourism team. We're going to actually going up to uh, Lake Tahoe in January and they're going to do a deal with the tourism team of Lake Tahoe up there. And sometimes it's just easier to just bake all the costs into the overall pitch because yeah. you don't want to say, hey, you're going to you know, content's going to be 20 grand. And then here's our line item for Ubers. Yeah. And we flew Alaska and they're like, well, fuck, you should have flown Frontier. Spirit, yeah. yeah. So we just like to, you know, bake it all. Okay. And then do you think like a lot of people here have brands in different businesses? Do you think it's an effective way to advertise? Yeah, I think Is so. it better than Facebook? Depends on what art audience you're targeting. Yeah. I say, and we have a pretty mature social audience, like our, um, majority demogra age demographic is 24 to 35 so we have like a pretty solid audience if you're going after you know young travelers yeah. um, but I think it's definitely effective and especially if we give them one really good content piece and we post it on our page and there's a chance that that content piece is picked up by so many other travel accounts that they just get all this free marketing like today we posted something from Conrad Bora Bora in Tahiti and there's probably going to be 30 other big travel accounts that repost that and everyone's going to see it's at the Conrad and they just got all this free viral marketing that we didn't charge for. So if, if I wanted to create an account like this today, can that happen? It would be tough um, just because pages don't really grow like they used to. Uh, and, you know, in 2016, you could pay for shout outs and there's so much, yeah, so many easier ways to grow your following. Um, now it's just, I think, more costly, and it's definitely just tougher in the algorithm. So yeah, with that, with that being said, on the algorithm, like, how do you manage, like, to, how, what's your business look like in two years? Like, how do you stay relevant? Um, yeah, I think that's why we've positioned ourselves so well in production, Got right? It. So if Instagram took a dive today, we have so many awesome content pieces that we've created for so many cool brands that I think we'd be fine, but Obviously, I want Instagram to do well because we're leveraged on the platform and we have this, you know, awesome two and a half million follower page that gets us in the door and that, you know, a lot of other production companies then, don't have. How come you didn't like build a YouTube following we or were, a Facebook or whatever? We just decided that Instagram was where it was at, especially in travel during that time period and wanted to focus solely on that. And just it's even I feel like it's even tougher to grow some of those YouTube followings as well. And we already had achieved such scale that might as well just, you know, win in the, this niche. Okay, here's the big question. What about TikTok? We don't have a TikTok page as of today. If I could buy TikTok pages, should I be buying them? You should. Yeah, I mean. Like if, if I can buy like a hot TikTok account that has 3 million followers. If you, have, if you have the brands or know how to monetize it, whether you're going to sell, you know, five, four packages through yeah. it or young and reckless clothes. And if you think you can get the page for 10 grand and in one month generate, you know, 10 grand sales from it, then you definitely. So seven years ago, early Instagram, I started a mobile fashion app with a couple friends. We raised VC money and we were struggling to figure out how to grow. And I, I just asked them, like, I wonder if we asked people if they would post to download it, they would do it. And I asked 100 people, and I think like 90 people just said, yeah, whatever, I'll post it. Yeah. No money, no nothing. Fast forward, then I started offering money, and I would offer $50, and yeah. then I went to 100. I think we ended up getting like 5 million downloads off really? maybe 25 grand. Yeah. It was very, because it was very inexpensive. And like, 
I ended up at that time buying a bunch of Instagram accounts for nothing, 500 bucks. Yeah, yeah. I, like I met this dude in the Philippines that had like every big Instagram account <laughs> yeah. that he had built up. And he was just like, he's like, yeah, I, I'm, he owned at fashion at this, at that. And I was like, all right, I'll take them. Yeah. I didn't know what to do with them. Yeah. And eventually I kind of handed yeah. it off to other people. But like, you don't think TikTok is like that right now? I think it depends on a what niche you're going for and i think we saw this on instagram where okay let's just go buy all the digital real estate out there and now we're just spread so thin and i realized if you didn't have a flagship account then you're not going to get any enterprise level advertisers so for our industry i was like let's just get one really good page and leverage that to then win in this niche because if you have 20 average pages no one's going to want to work with you so if we're a brand and we want to advertise should we only go up, advertise on big pages or should we go after like i think it's different like the our industries are a little bit different we were just trying to have a good brand to attract travel clients but for you i mean if it's you can buy a page for five thousand bucks and make your money back back on that page specifically in a month then it seems like on tiktok on tiktok seems like a good idea yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. I wanna buy TikTok pages. What you also should do is pay people to shout out your page. So like on Instagram, that was really big and still it still works depending on what pages you use, but like we'll still hit up, you know, someone with a big travel account and pay him a hundred bucks. This was even like a month ago, paid him a hundred bucks, said, sent him one of our content pieces that we had created. And I said, just make the caption, are you not following at paradise yet? go follow Paradise for more. We grew 10,000 followers in like four hours. Wow, so it actually still works. Still works. The but, same tricks. But you can't keep hammering the same uh, assets people. because the algorithm will catch on to that and it'll ding you and it just won't work. Got it, so should as if, we're, if we have brands or businesses on Instagram, what should we be doing? If you have brands or businesses on Instagram, what should we be doing? You like, should. Like what's gonna work, like that is gonna resonate with people? Well, I mean, there's so many different businesses on Instagram and so yeah. many different style of brands. If, I mean, I think if you have a brand on Instagram, it's a good idea to position yourself on some of these up and coming platforms like TikTok. Um, but also test new types of content, see what your audience likes and see like how many products you can actually move through that. that Is page. IGTV stupid? It looks stupid to me. When... When IGTV first came out, I thought it was like, yes, we just inherited a TV channel, right? We have, now we can post 60 minute content pieces. Um, I think it's not stupid at all. I think like if there's companies like Barstool that post like the pizza review on it every single day for two and a half minutes or four minutes long and people watch the entire content piece, but unless you're consistent on it, it's gonna be tough to get that audience to watch it over and over. Like for us, we've really only posted a couple longer pieces in 60 seconds so they haven't done as well we'd Got actually it. have to be more consistent like you know come out with an igtv series and i think if you do that you can win igtv that's cool last question what's the best meme account what's the to best? follow the best meme account to follow <laughs> fat jewish someone like that okay. <laughs> all right amazing thank you um my 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 goal with him being here today was really just to educate all of us on like what's going on on social media and how we can take advantage of it because if you like he paid someone a hundred dollars to shout him out on his account he got ten thousand followers i'm pretty sure everyone here would give a hundred dollars to get ten thousand followers right now and so we just sometimes we overthink like people will like hash out this like well thought out marketing plan on how to like you know, grow their brand or grow their business, and all he did was pay someone a hundred bucks. PayPal. <laughs> PayPal a hundred bucks to some random person, and it worked. So I think uh, it's really interesting that like that's that still works, and the, the simplest, easiest things are still relevant.